charge. How do I charge the plate before I sharpen clipper blades? I just remember the word charge. Charging the plate, seasoning the plate, there's different terms for it. When you prepare your plate for sharpening clipper blades, this one's your Nebraska blades hone or whatever hone, these are the steps that I use that work for me in remembering how to charge the plate. And I use the letters in the word charge, C-H-A-R-G-E. Each one reminds you of something to do when you're preparing your plate between your clipper blades. So let's start with the letter C. The C in charge is to clean your plate. You have to take all this grit off in order to replace it. To clean off the plate, my choice is H42. I buy them in the big jugs like this. You can buy it straight from H42 or you can buy it through Banica Shears or other sources. This is um, used to clean your clippers as well and shears. It disinfects everything but it cleans the plate really really well and gets everything out and leaves a little bit of oil behind. I have it in a spray bottle. So I grab my blue shop towel. One square is sufficient. Fold it once, fold it twice. You can spray your towel, spray the plate. You don't want to soak it but you want to have enough on here. And you see how good the plate turns as I'm wiping it off. And the towel, see, because it's folded, I can flip it over. Occasionally, you're going to need your vacuum cleaner and get this extra debris out of here and around the sides. Uh, shop back is helpful. You see I'm still working at it. Some people will use other products to clean their plate. I've seen alcohol, I've seen blade wash used. Um, I know some people never clean their plates or only occasionally clean it and then they'll take the whole disc off and take it to the sink and, and clean. I like to make this a part of my process to wipe it off and clean it each time. And you see this is about how clean I get it. Maybe I might do one more swipe. And what that has done, it's removed all the grit. And you see I have a little bit left on here, but that's about, about as clean as you want it. Remember how it looked when my fingers went over it before. Now my fingers are pretty much clean. Oh, as clean as they get in this job. The H in charge stands for hogs or lard oil, <laughs> the fat from the hog. So if you can remember the H, that's the word. This is the lard oil that we get from Nebraska Blades and it is has no odor to it. It's not like, it's from a pig, but it's not, you know, something you're going to eat. And you see how it's separated here? So before you use it, you're going to shake it. And, and get it and you've got to shake it a good bit because you see it's taken me a little bit to get all this mixed together. Sometimes some people like to mix this half and half with H42. I like to use the pure lard oil because it seems to last longer and I don't have to charge it as often. I'm putting this in something else and this is a, like a shampoo bottle. You can Something that you can drip it out. Shampoo bottles work really well. This originally had a label on it and as you see it, it's kind of gone. Off, but there's some oil in here. It might be time to put some more in here. Make sure that when you add more to your shampoo bottle, you shake this up well so you get a good mixture. Got a good mix and I'm going to pour some in here. That's probably sufficient for a while. It doesn't, you know what, it, this really, I don't, you don't use this much so you're not having to constantly put this in here. Now some sharpeners, what they like to do is put oil in some type of little container like this and dip a paintbrush into it. It's a sponge paint brushes in here and put it on. And I've tried that and I can't be as consistent in what I want to put here. So I'm going to shake this up good. I'm careful as I pop it open because I don't want oil spitting out. And I'm putting in about that much. Can you see? 
There's might be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about ten little drops. I don't know what that would measure to, maybe about three teaspoons, but I don't think anybody ever gets a measure. Okay, I'm back to my blue shop towel, and this is what I want to use to smear it. Now, typically, I'll use the same towel over and over until it kind of gets dirty, or I may want to use a microfiber cloth, which is this really nasty looking but I might find a little clean area of this to apply it. The idea is I want to make sure that the oil is on the plate and not on my cloth. So I don't want to be wiping it off. I want to be smearing it. So sometimes a cloth that's already a little oily and not that absorbent will do a better job of smearing your oil all over here. And this is all part of the H in charging your plate. Just think piggy, think hogs. And you can sort of see a little bit of sheen and see that you've got it all over the plate. As I said, either a cloth or you can use a shop towel. You just don't want to be wiping it off. You want to make sure it's staying on here. So whatever your system is. A is apply grit. I usually buy 240 grit. There's different grades of grit or coarseness or fineness depending on what you're using. This is the most common one used and it's this one that typically will come with your machine but you may find that you're going to need something coarser. On grit the lower the number the coarser it is. The higher the number the finer it is. If you're doing a lot of little trimmer blades, little small things, you may want to have a finer grit. If you're doing a lot of large animal blades like for horses or llamas or whatever, then you may want a coarser grit. Different sharpeners will argue about what they find is the best grit and so sometimes it's good to have a couple of different things because when you charge it, recharge it, you could change the grit. It's not a problem. But 240 is what I use. I don't shake out of this. I will put this into some kind of a shaker and I've got one that's kind of funny um, taco seasoning so I, sometimes people call it instead of charging the plate seasoning the plate so that kind of goes along with the theme of seasoning so this is my seasoning for my plate and I've got the, my grit in here and I'm going to just shake it on now grit is cheap and if you get too much you haven't heard anything if you get too little you can mess up your plate and these are expensive not only will get bad clipper blade sharpening, but you can actually cause damage to your plate. Once you cause damage to the plate, it's not like you throw it away. You can flip it over. The other side you can use, and then you're going to have to get them resurfaced, which is, you know, you're talking about a few hundred dollars and then shipping. So I'm putting my grit on, and I'm applying my grit. You see, it's just like fine sand. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Like I said, it's better to have too much than too little. Now, I take a paintbrush, any old paintbrush you've got, and my idea is to get this grit all spread in here and in all the grooves. Now, can you see how it's changing colors here? It's going from a sandy color to a dark color. That's what I want. If it's going to the darker color, it's telling me that it's mixing with the oil or the lard oil, the hog fat underneath. If it stays sandy colored as I'm mixing it in, I know I don't have enough of the lard. If it turns into mud, which I've done that on occasions, uh, you're just going to have a real problem. You're just better off stopping and cleaning it off and starting over. And it takes a, it takes a little bit of practice to you get the hang of how much lard oil, how much grit, how much to clean, all these things will, will become second nature to you as you've been doing this. And it'll, you'll be a lot faster than what you see me doing. I am really not fast at charging the plate. Don't like charging the plate. But my suggestion is to do this after every six blades. So you see I've kind of got the spread all over. I still have this area here to work. And it's not even, but I've got this kind of spread around and all the grit has taken on this dark color. So I've mixed it with the hog lard oil. The R in charging is rubbing. Rub it in. We're going to rub this grit in. Now this is a pine block, just a regular block, but it has been rounded off a little bit so there's not any sharp corners, no splinters, and uh, all you were doing is pushing this in. I've seen other people with different products that they use to do this, and you can try them. This works for me. So I'm starting in the middle and I'm pressing. 
Um, the amount of pressure I'm doing is, I'm not a real strong person, so I'm putting, let's, let's actually see what pounds of pressure. Here's a scale. So let's pretend like it's the scale I'm pressing on. And my dials are pretty messed up here, but you can still see. So I'm doing about five pounds of pressure. This is, if you sharpen shears, I'm not putting as much pressure here as I do in doing a rod line. That will be more pressure. And the idea of this is I'm pressing this into the groove. When you've got a new plate, those grooves are not going to be in there yet. So you're going to have to charge your plate after every blade. And you see I got more grit than I really needed, but as I say, you know, once again, grit is not expensive and you're better off having too much grit than too little. So what I'm wanting is, you see how I'm getting that nice matte look? Now I've lightened my pressure a little bit because I'm wanting to kind of sling off this extra grit. I was pushing it hard to begin with, now it's lighter. And if you've got it right, if you push your block, it just will slide. See, it just sort of glides over. And another way to check to see if you've got it right, if you take your block and you go like this, the grit will come off of it. So I'm ready for the next step. G stands for guide. I'm going to attach a laser guide here. There are other types of guides you can use. You want to make sure your guide is set before you sharpen any clipper blades. And this is an important step because sometimes your little laser pointer can get knocked or pushed. Can you see how the light is way off kilter? So I would need to turn it so that I'm getting a direct angle from here to here. Now some sharpeners like to have it up a little bit as long as it's they're getting that true diagonal because they'll have the head of their blades here as they're working. This guide is this way and we're going here you're not going to get a right edge on your blades. So that edge has to be going this way. Now if you need to, as I said, push it up here so that you can see it when you're going, that, that works fine. Now there's another choice besides a laser pointer. Some people will do a string and then there's a, another one I'll show you. This was an idea given to me by Josh Davis Clipper Pros in Beaufort, Georgia. He bought one of these retractable key rings. <coughs> and you can buy these at hardware stores or different places. So I've attached my retractable key ring here. And I've bought one of these little magnetic hooks. You can buy those also at the hardware store. Have it on the hook. I bring it over, make sure it's perfectly lined up, you don't want anything off, and then when you're doing your clipper blade, your knuckle can actually rest against here as you're doing your blade. You see the advantage of that? Um, string doesn't do, has too much give to it, but this one's tight enough that you can see if you're moving it and if you're staying straight. This might be a guide when you're starting out, or it could be something you use all the time. But I thought that was an ingenious idea. Just as I said, make sure it's straight and lined up. That's part of the G, is your guide has to be just right. The E stands for energize, which means to turn on your hone. Do you see the little light in here? That actually, there's a cover normally that goes on here, but I've taken it off so you can see the digital readout of the speed. I have this turned all the way up. For most blades, I'd go full blast. If I was doing a trimmer, maybe something I wanted to go a little slower, or maybe even at the beginning when I'm getting used to it, I might go slower. Typically, I'll always go full speed. And you'll see the readout on here. You see the numbers going up? You want to wait till it goes to the full speed you want to sharpen at before you begin sharpening a blade. And it's still going and my speed is 600. Let's count how many seconds it takes for it to stop. Now at this point while it's still running, if I were charging the plate, I could start my cleaning and wiping it off. You could also have some type of a block or break in here. 
See, that'll stop it. It's, it doesn't hurt your plate or your machine to use something in here to slow it down. That's if you're in a hurry. Most of the time, I'm working on another blade. Another suggestion, you see how I have this block in here? Let's say you're traveling with your machine and you have this in a van. I would have something to brace this wheel so it's not turning while you're driving. You could have some kind of a block or some type of styrofoam, something in here to block your wheel to keep it from turning as you're going over bumps. The plate is balanced exactly so. You, in fact, if you turn it around, you'll see there's like little holes in it which they've put in there, they've drilled these holes to make this balance so it's not a wobble. Because it's very important to have this plate completely stationary and completely flat without any kind of wiggle wobbles to it. So that's charging your plate. You're going to do that between about every six blades or when you see the sparks going down. And this is a simple way to remember all the steps. Now you may find other people have other methods, other things they do. And I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying this is the simplest, most consistent way of recharging your home. We have lots of videos on sharpening shears and clipper blades. Our best ones are kind of kept secret. They're on our website. We also do hands-on training around the country and also at our offices here in Atlanta. So check with us, download an information package, and please subscribe and like and comment. And these are some of our videos I think you'll enjoy watching next.